Matthew Lopez's The Inheritance took London by storm last season, winning four Olivier Awards, including Best New Play. Now the New York set epic, inspired by E.M. Forster's Howard's End, has landed on Broadway. We're here at the Barrymore Theatre to meet the cast. You have been on the Broadway landscape for 67 years, so I like to think that you know a good play when you see one. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> what do you like about The Inheritance? The best things, it seems to me, combine something that really touches and matters and is so funny at the same time. And this one is one of those. It's a beauty. Obviously the play was inspired by Ian Forster's Howard's End, but it's not a literal retelling of Howard's End. It kind of, you know, bounces in and out of that plot, but it has this whole other thing going on. What do you tell people The Inheritance is really about? It follows the story of these two men, uh, Toby Darling and Eric Glass, and kind of where they fit in the generations of gay men that came before them and what they are giving to the next generation. It is a retelling of E.M. Forster's Howard's End and it's also a kind of reclaiming of it. It's a play about uh, a chosen family. It's a play about a group of friends and them meeting a, a group of people from an older generation and the bridge they build between the two of them. It's the inheritance of a, an older generation to the new generation. And conversely, I had a friend of mine see it and him and his partner have a son. And he was explaining to me like, the fact that this is this exists in a world where my son can see this, it's the inheritance to a generation that they don't even know that they're gonna get this, you know? It's about community, it's about like and like it's about our ancestors, our queer ancestors. It's about like, you know, reaching into the past and like so understand it so that way we can move forward. The show is a conversation over three generations of gay men talking through our trauma, talking through our triumphs, talking through our joys about asking how to honor the giants that uh, the, the, the giants that you stood literally on the shoulders of. Um, and I also think it's about how do you live life to the nth degree. At the end of the day, I think what my play really is about is the question that I think everybody uh, asks uh, throughout their lives. And you don't have to be a gay man, you don't have to be a queer person. You just have to be alive to, to wonder, where do I belong? Where do I fit in? Um, what group do I associate with? Uh, what did I uh, receive from the people who came before me? And what am I going to leave to the people who come after me? At the heart of it is this conversation between Matthew and E.M. Forrester about this thing that Matthew holds so dear, which is Howard's End. We call him Morgan right. in our piece. And he is helping these uh, young men uh, tell their story. We're all stuck trying to tell our story. E.M. Forrester comes through and uses Howard's End as a guidepost for us, as a marker, markers for us to, to, to hit, while staying honest to the piece and honest to ourselves and letting uh, us know how to tell the right story the way we Want to tell him. It's important to have that conversation with a man like Forrester who was a closeted gay man and in conversation with these out proud New Yorkers. I think Morgan has of experiencing this life with these young men which allows him to live out aspects of himself that he wasn't allowed to live out in his own lifetime. It's really powerful and impactful for me. Yeah. Every day when he says the line, I think your lives are beautiful, I've never, you know, really had the opportunity for a, a person in an older generation for me to, to tell me that. And that's um, a, such a gift. Audiences have the sort of amazing option of watching mm. both parts in one day, yeah, which yeah. I highly recommend. Yes, yeah. What is that like for you as a performer? I've heard other actors talk about how, what a special experience that is going through those days with the same group of audience oh, yeah. members. Yeah, it's, it's purely magical. I mean, to be able to take this full epic journey with the same people and have this continued conversation with the same people who start to, f we all f kind of start to fall in love with each other in a way. Um, and it becomes a large family in that theater. It's a marathon. I mean, it's great because you feel the whole sweep of the story and you really, as an actor, get to experience the breadth of everything that we go through. Um, it's exhausting by the end for sure but it's also very exhilarating i think something happens when you share six and a half hours with the same people in the same room breathing the same air there's a feeling on both sides of like buckle up you know we got to climb this mountain together 
they don't want to leave after part one. They're just like, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's stay on the ride. It really is like binge watching theater, which is not something we, we think of binge watching Netflix. We don't think of binge watching Broadway, but this is a great Broadway binge.